Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked On Wolves. This is the post game podcast from the Wolves' 11 point loss to the Orleans Pelicans. The first time all season the Timberwolves have lost two consecutive games, the last team in the league that that's true for. We'll talk about a clunky offensive game, um, a step slow defensively against the Pels, and also uh, just, just a, um, I don't know, a step slow all the way around, getting killed on the glass. We'll talk about the whole thing here on the show. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked on Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Happy Thursday, everybody. Uh, this was a uh, this this is the post game podcast I should say following the Wolves loss to the Pelicans, Minnesota now splits the season series with New Orleans. We'll break down the whole game. There were issues on both ends of the floor, and of course we'll get uh, towards the end here to individual studs and duds as well. But we'll do the whole thing here on the post game pod. A big thank you here off the top though for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch Lockdown Wolves on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Um, I think the best way to start this show is by acknowledging, like, if I could summarize this, this, this game in one sentence, which I want to say a lot more words about it. So don't, don't turn the pot off yet, please. If I could summarize this in one sentence, it's, Wait, which team was playing the second night of a back-to-back after traveling? Because that it looked like the Wolves. New Orleans played last night. They, they, they on, or I should say, uh, Wednesday night. No, my days are off. They played Tuesday night. They won. They beat Brooklyn by double digits. It was a blowout. Like their starters all played twenty-five or less points. And then they come to Minnesota on Wednesday night, second night of a back-to-back, having to travel overnight. Minnesota's at home waiting for them. And Minnesota's the team that looks like they are a full step slow on both ends of the floor. Early in the game, I actually thought the Timberwolves' defense was okay in the first quarter. Minnesota was, what, down four, uh, four, three. Down three at the end of the first quarter. New Orleans was making some tough contested shots. Brandon Ingram, C.J. McCollum, they both looked very comfortable all game long. Very, very early in the first quarter, there were a couple of ticky tackier fouls called against uh, the Wolves' Guarding Zion Williamson, he got six free throw attempts in this game, and I think all of them were early. Certainly at least four of them were in the first quarter. And it kind of felt like, oh no, this is what happened a couple weeks ago in New Orleans when when Zion got a billion free throw attempts in New Orleans, attempted 40 as a team. And I, I was worried that things would snowball. And sure enough, the Wolves were not as physical in this game as New Orleans, and that was one of the biggest issues. But it wasn't necessarily a prey to the free throw line. In fact, the Wolves ended up shooting 10 more free throws than the Pelicans. They were called the Wolves were called for 11 less personal fouls than the Pelicans were. So that wasn't ultimately the issue. Very early in the game, though, even though the Wolves defense was OK in the first quarter, like I, I thought it was acceptable. New Orleans made tough shots and they clearly look like the more physical team. And sure enough, as we got into the second quarter, which is this is what happened in the Knicks game, by the way, uh, on, on Monday afternoon. The Wolves played a strong first quarter and things just fell apart in the second. And and it was, you know, a, a little bit the uh, the bench getting involved and, and not playing all that well. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But New Orleans starts to build this lead in the second quarter. And the Wolves defense went from decent to not very good. And they couldn't make shots themselves offensively. In fact, turnovers weren't even necessarily an issue for the Wolves in this game. They actually were a plus one in the turnover category. They only had... A, a handful at halftime. Um, in fact, nobody on the team had more than one turnover except for Anthony Edwards, who had six in this game. So it wasn't a problem for anyone else. Like 
other recent culprits, Cat, Kyle Anderson, like those guys weren't problems in the turnover category. It was really just missing some open shots. And New Orleans was making contested shots early in the game. And sometimes that happens in the NBA. And then, of course, as things moved forward, like I would even say starting in the second quarter, New Orleans shots started to get a little bit more open and the Wolves were scrambling a little bit less defensively and they, there was less of a sense of urgency as the game wore on, which of course is the opposite of, of what should be happening, especially against the team that's on the second night of a back-to-back. But instead at halftime, the Wolves were down 13 and New Orleans extended the lead. And by the end of the third quarter, it pretty much felt like it was over. New Orleans at one point led by uh, as many as 24 points. And going to the fourth quarter, it was, I think, a 21-point lead. And, and it really wasn't as close as the 11-point final deficit. Um, and and a, a big part of that was just the Wolves missing open shots. Like, the defense, uh, don't get me wrong. Ultimately, the defense was not good. It was really, again, middle stages. Same thing as the Knicks game, second and third quarter, which, I you know, the third quarter has been so good all year up until recently. The Knicks game, it was bad uh, until late in the third when Jordan McLaughlin kind of led that mini comeback for Minnesota against the Knicks, but the second quarter, especially, and then the first part of the third quarter were very bad once again for Minnesota. And that's how they found themselves down 24 defensively. The point of attack defense was just shoddy. Like no matter who it was, I, I mean, everybody was a culprit. Jade McDaniels, Nick Alexander Walker, Mike Conley, uh cat was not good defensively in this game. Like anybody on the perimeter was just getting caught um, a step slow and like New Orleans isn't a team, they they do damage in the paint, but that's mainly because of Alan Tunis and Zion, almost entirely because of Zion, really. Um, this this was like a, you know, McCollum can get to where he wants and get a shot off wherever he wants, but he'd rather do his damage from the mid-range and outside the arc, and he did. I mean, he was four of six outside the arc and four of ten inside the arc, but he had some easy mid-range jumpers. Ingram hit some tough contested shots. He was seven of 11 shooting. And the Pelicans... Like, I'll, I'll say this another way. I mean, they got to almost 56% shooting in this game, 55.6% from the field, 46% from three. The first part of it was they were hitting tough contested shots, and then the Wolves kind of threw up their hands and 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 stopped trying as hard defensively, quite frankly. And uh, the Pelicans said, all right, we'll just keep making our shots, whether they're open or contested, and that's exactly what happened. Minnesota, on the flip side, did not make open shots early. And ultimately, the, the, the total field goal percentage for Minnesota – was respectable. It was over 45%, but that was because of a lot of fourth quarter, like the Pels defense was at that point had given up because they were up 20 plus Minnesota scored 35 in the fourth quarter. And it was all just kind of the Pelicans letting them get into the paint and some cheap fouls towards the end of the game. But going to the fourth quarter, the wolves only had 71 points and were, were pacing a score below hundred. Um, they didn't shoot the ball well from the perimeter, 32% from deep for Minnesota Yes, they got to the line a bunch, but again, a lot of that was late. There was some ant fourth quarter free throw line stuff. There was cat getting to the line in garbage time. You had Jordan McLaughlin, uh, Josh Minot, you know, those guys getting free throws. So this was just a, a not well played game from the Timberwolves. And, and I, I, I boil much of it down again to lack of urgency. And this was the first time all season Minnesota had lost us, uh, uh, you know, two games in a row. And that's notable. I mean, we're we're almost a quarter or excuse me, almost half of the way through the season. What are we? 33 games in now. So we're we're past the third, uh, the third of the way mark. We're what? Nine games away. No, eight games away from the midway point. Um, so. You know, that's notable, like that's a well, the Wolves can we can hang our hats on that. That's a very good thing. It's also only their second home loss. They're still 14 and two at home. They're still 24 and nine overall. Um, also, it was another. This was the Wolves' ninth loss. And of those nine losses, seven of them have been double-digit losses. So when the Wolves lose, they lose pretty spectacularly, and they usually win close games. Um, you know, opening night against Toronto is the only one possession game they've lost all season. They lost by six to New York on Monday. So, um, you know, it, it happens. It happens. Now, the, the part that's a little scary is that it's happened. Not scary. Scary is not the right word. That's dramatic. The part that's maybe a little worrisome, we'll say it that way, is that it's happening with some more frequency. And of course, we could talk about the schedule, and I will actually here in a minute. We'll talk about that a little bit and and how we can we can point to that. A couple more things on this game, a couple of key takeaways. We will get to individual studs and duds here, and that's what we'll do uh, the rest of the show today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at BetterHelp. Today's show is sponsored 
by BetterHelp. Uh, around New Year's Day, we tend to get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. And, and that's the obsession with New Year's resolutions, of course. Um, like, for instance, maybe you want to organize a, a part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're trying to get in shape or trying to, you know, just lose some LBs or whatever. You're trying to take supplements every morning, but you actually want to eat breakfast as well. Like, you know, do some of those other things, too. Um, therapy can help you find your strengths. So you could ditch extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. And that's one of the dangers with New Year's resolutions is it's easy to, to, to aim big and to, to fall short and then be upset with yourself. And there's no reason to do that at this time of year or at any time of year for that matter. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, which could certainly help with the whole New Year's resolution mindset, consider giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress that you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockdownNBA. Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right. Um, a couple of other observations, takeaways from this game. The Timberwolves didn't have anybody. I talked about how the offense was clunky and the defense was a step slow. Not only did the Wolves not shoot the ball well from the perimeter, the process wasn't always there either. They actually got some decent looks, but most of that was early in the game, kind of transition, secondary break. Um, the, the, the flow of the offense was never really there, and they kind of stumbled into some decent looks that they just didn't make. Um, Carl Anthony Towns did not get going. I know he finished with 22 points. Took him 19 shots to get there, and I, you know, I don't know how much of it was in the fourth quarter, but it felt like at least 10 of those points were in the fourth quarter. Like th there just wasn't a whole lot early from Cat, um, and he looked a bit out of sorts. You know, like he had all of last week, and then looked pretty good against the Knicks on Monday in, in stretches against Julius Randle and in the first quarter of that game. But this was somewhere in between. Like it wasn't quite as bad as it was last week, but he was a bit out of sorts. 22 points and 19 shots for Cat. Nobody else really got going offensively. Um, Mike Conley tried to force the issue a little offensively early, took a couple of two pointers that he missed. Rudy never got going. And we've seen that a lot more here lately. The field goal attempts have been down. Teams are fouling him a lot more in general. In this game, the Pelicans just did a good job of clogging the paint and trying to take away rolls. And they did a really good job. The Wolves, uh, turned it over a couple of times, trying to force it to Rudy. He had one lob dunk and then one other nice, I think high low pass from Ant that Rudy got a dunk on. He ended up just three field goal attempts in 24 minutes for Rudy Gobert. He was in a little bit of foul trouble early. Four fouls in this game. He picked up two quick ones in the first quarter. Jade McDaniels I actually thought looked pretty good offensively. It's just the flow wasn't there. And the bench numbers, like the bench plus minuses and stuff, all look pretty good, but that's mostly because of the garbage time stuff at the end of the game. Um, it, those minutes weren't very good. Jordan McLaughlin did not play great. Um, well, I take that back. He had a, a couple of, I swear he had more than one steal. He got involved defensively right away, and, and I talked about this on the show on Wednesday, getting ready for this game, that the Jose Alvarado matchup makes sense for Jordan McLaughlin. He's one of the few point guards that he's going to face that's smaller than he is. Um, but he missed a couple open shots. He was 0 for 4 on threes. Uh, you know, four assists, no turnovers, typical for Jordan McLaughlin. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why he lost the spot in the rotation in the first place is the knocking down open threes has gotten worse for him almost like literally coming into the season every year, his three point percentage has gone down. Um, so, you know, you're going to miss open threes. That's, it's just like, he doesn't bring much then at that point. Right. Um, Alexander Walker, another game where he didn't really get going offensively. He had one tough shot. He made uh, an and one actually, but not much there. Nas Reed never got going. Um, Kyle Anderson, another bad game from slow-mo. I, I just didn't think he brought much to the table. Like, there wasn't any offense except for Ant. And, and and I talked about the offense being clunky. I would, you know, stagnant's another word to use. Today felt more clunky than stagnant, if that makes sense. But it was it was definitely both, right? Um, there was a lot of ball watching. There's a lot of sticky, you know, Ant just having sticky hands and hanging onto the ball. 
um, five assists, six turnovers for Ant. So it was almost like he was, and he even said this. He he told us he was going to do this like a week ago. I forget what game it was where he came into it and he goes, yeah, I came into the game expecting to shoot every time I touched the ball. Like he literally had a quote. That's almost exactly what it was. I don't have it in front of me, but it was, he said he thought he would shoot every time down the floor, every time he touched the ball, whatever. That's what this felt like. And then all of his passes were were like a, a fourth option. It was a last resort. It was like, ah, I should pass the ball here. I'm stuck or whatever. You know, he had a pass that hit the, the underside of the backboard out of bounds. There was a pass that, uh, you know, or, or the, the support, there was, um, at least one that went out of bounds, which is typical, uh, just some bad turnovers from Anthony Edwards again, and with only five assists. And then you look at Mike Conley, Conley has nine assists, zero turnovers. Conley's nine and zero. McLaughlin's four and zero and Ant's five and six. This was, this was Ant realizing he was the only one that had it going offensively because he was efficient 35 on 22 shots, 50% from the field, nine of 10 at the line, four of seven from three, everything about that stat line for Ant is efficient except for the six turnovers. And again, it was, I would describe his passing in this game specifically as a last resort. And he was, he was the focal point. He was the entire world. Everything in this game was orbiting around Ant for better or for worse. And there were a lot of good things he did the 35 points on 22 shots. And then there were the bad things, the kind of herky jerky offense, the, the technical for clapping at the official again, um, the six turnovers to just five assists and, and also some spotty defense. I didn't mention him earlier, but he was, he was part of the problem on the perimeter in this game, just inconsistent. Um, another thing, the wolves got crushed on the glass. They were a minus 13. They gave up nine offensive rebounds to New Orleans. They, uh, a minus 13 of the glass, 41 to 28, um, combating the problems that they had otherwise. Carl Thirty Towns finished with six boards, but again, he had like one midway through the second quarter, I think. Nas had six in 25 minutes off the bench, had a couple of guys with five. Well, Rudy had five, I guess. Um, players that played significant minutes with no rebounds, Jade McDaniels, again, 33 minutes, goose egg in the rebound, mark, uh, rebound call. I get it. He's on the perimeter bunch. He's guarding. He has tough assignments. Dude's like 6'10". He's got to grab a rebound. Uh, last game against the Knicks, one rebound in 33 minutes. Four games ago against Dallas, zero rebounds in 34 minutes. In the month of December, he averaged 2.4 rebounds per game. In the month of November, he averaged 2.1 rebounds per game. So far... In the month of January, in two games, he's averaging 0.5 rebounds per game. Jim McDaniels has to rebound the basketball at a at a better clip than that. Mike Conley also zero rebounds in 26 minutes. Nikhil Alexander Walker zero rebounds in 19 minutes. You had three players. This is a weird way to say this, but three players that played a combined 78 minutes without a rebound three players that played a combined 78 minutes. They all played heavy minutes in this game. Zero rebounds. Can't have that happen. You just can't have it happen. Um, and, and you know that I, there's a reason I waited until now to talk about it. That's not why the wolves lost this game, but it's one of those factors. In fact, you know, some of these games, like the Knicks game that they lost, you look at the box score and it's like, man, eh, they did some things fine. Like, some of these games that they were, you know, the Thunder game, they did some stuff good except for turning the ball over. The Dallas game, they won a lot of categories, but didn't win the game by more. Sorry, not Dallas. Was it Dallas on on Thursday of last week? I think it was. Whoever they played on Thursday of last week, it's going to bother me. I'm going to look it up real quick. Oh, yeah, the Dallas game after the Thunder. And that is the game I'm thinking of. And then also the Lakers, but especially the Dallas game. They turned it over a bunch. They ended up winning by eight. They could have won by a lot more, but they did everything else right besides turning it over, right? This was not one of those games. Minus 13 on the glass. Four less assists than the opponent. Uh, they turned it over one less time. They fouled a bunch less, uh, which is good. They got to the line, you know, more, which is fine. But they shot the ball terribly from the floor. They shot the ball really badly from outside the arc. They allowed the opponent to shoot the ball well. They lost points in the paint. It was close, but they lost it. Um, you know, a lot of these numbers were close, but it's not like they won every other category and lost one big, right? They just weren't good across the board compared to how they've been playing for most of the season. So there were multiple factors that played into um, into this being an 11-point loss that, frankly, should have been more than an 11-point loss. 
in this one. All right. Uh, let's close by talking individual studs and duds. We did some stat lines already, so I'll do that fairly quick and then we'll get into um, you know, the the a quick bigger picture look at the schedule, what's upcoming here for Minnesota. We'll do all that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up this weekend, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. You can do live game, excuse me, live same game parlays, Find bets in the new Explore tab. You can also make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. The Wolves next. We'll talk about the schedule here in a minute, but next they take on the Houston Rockets. First time this year we've seen Houston. That's in Houston on Friday night. Houston's a very good home team. Uh, it's basically Houston and the Wolves, the best two home teams in the West by far. So, uh, you know, go check out that line over at FanDuel. You can also look at the Wolves' odds to win the Northwest Division, to win the title. We talked on the Minnesota Basketball Party on Wednesday morning about Chris Finch currently has the second best odds next to OKC's Mark Dagno in terms of uh, NBA Coach of the Year. So go check that out at FanDuel as well. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, individual studs and duds for Wolves Pelicans. For the Wolves, I mean, hey, I don't know that any individual player played well enough to truly deserve what a stud means after a, after a game. I mean, really, have to go with Ant. The 35 on 22 is too efficient, and nobody else brought anything to the game or to the table offensively at all. Uh, 50% for the field, greater than 50% outside the arc, 4 of 7, 9 of 10 at the line, so... I mean, this is better than a 50, 49, almost is exactly a 50, 40, 90 night uh, for Ant. The six turnovers are not great to the just five assists, four boards for Ant. He did have one steal and one block in this game, too. We talked about some issues defensively, the technical. Um, he is getting the line a lot more here recently, and that's great to see. Yes, he should be getting to the line more often. He still gets a weak whistle, uh, but he's got to figure out. He just it, it just was not productive tonight, not just the technical. But the complaining rings hollow, and I know it's partly out of frustration, but when the team doesn't complain too much, and then all of a sudden they're down 8, 10, 12, and the complaining gets really bad, it, it gets to be a bit much. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll defend it more if, if these games are close. Um, you know, And the next game was one where I got a little bit worked up about the officiating, but uh, it rings a bit hollow when there's other issues in the game. So anyway, it was good. Otherwise, besides the turnovers and some of the defensive issues, uh, he was also, again, like I said, part of the clunkiness of the offense, but without him, this thing's probably a 30 point loss. Um, I don't know. I can't in good conscience, give Jade good conscience, give Jade McDaniels a stud with zero boards in 33 minutes and spotty defense at best. He struggled a bit lately here overall. Um, shoot. I don't know. There really isn't anybody else. I mean, I thought Mike Conley was fine. He didn't add much offensively. I guess I'll give one to him. Like, I don't know where else I'd go with this. Conley had seven points on three of five shooting. Did hit a three towards the end of the second quarter that felt like it could give the Wolves a bit of momentum. Uh, was it the second quarter? It was in the right corner. Uh, and Yeah, it was second quarter. Um, it got the Wolves. It was like from 17 down to 14 before halftime. It kind of felt like maybe that could give the Wolves a lift. Um, and then it ended up not doing that but anyway nine assists no turnovers for conley that's a nice night overall when nobody else played all that well so i guess we'll give it to him i don't know that i've ever not picked a third stud but i'm not gonna I, there's nobody else i mean like shake had a nice run during garbage time hit a corner three which is really good to see had a, a layup after a nice cut um good for shake i don't know two studs that's it duds um I don't know. I'll go Rudy Gobert. Rudy got into foul trouble early for no reason. A couple of soft fouls that were fouls by the letter of the law. Yes, they were soft. Yes, they were weak calls. They were correct. And Rudy has to know better than defending the way he defended early in this game against a physical team. Um, you just got to be be more physical in a smart way. You can't swing down at the ball. 
Uh, Rudy doesn't have to do that to block shots. It was weird. It, it didn't feel like what the Rudy had been watching for most of the year. He didn't find a way to make himself useful offensively either. And, and credit New Orleans for the way they played defense, collapsing in the paint, shrinking the floor in a way. Um, but Rudy just was very quiet in this game, so he gets it done. I'm going to give one to... Eh, I don't know. Let's give let's give the second one. They lost. I got to give a second one. Let's give the second one to um, to Jordan McLaughlin. Uh, J-Mac did some good stuff, but he's got to knock down open threes. You can't go 0 for 4 when you get your chance to join the rotation. I get it's a bit of a catch-22. You got to be in a rhythm to be effective as a bench player, but you got to get new rhythm quick if you're going to get minutes. I think he'll still get some run against Houston on Friday. Uh, matchup might be okay for him. Uh, and also, well... I mean, he play like again. Him and Conley combined for 13 assists, no turnovers. Like they're not, they're not the problem. The point guard play is not the problem when it comes to the Wolves turning the ball over. But turning the ball over also wasn't the issue in this game either. So anyway, that's kind of a that's a weak dot. I'll admit that. But um, one of six from the floor, oh four outside the arc, and the Wolves just as a team did not shoot the three ball well at all. All right. Um, in terms of this recent run of games, like we've talked before about how this is really a gauntlet. Like going back to the first time the Wolves played New Orleans, uh, not the first time all year, but that New Orleans game on December 11th. Going back to then, every single team the Wolves have played since December 11th, which is nearly, a, I don't know, three and a half weeks ago, has been a playoff team, a, a team that will almost certainly make the playoffs this year. Over that course of time, the Wolves are seven and five. Did I count that right? Two, four, yeah, seven and five since December 11th. All playoff teams. That's not bad. A couple of back-to-backs in there. Of those 12 games, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them have been on the road. So they played seven of 12 on the road, all 12 against playoff teams, and they're seven and five. Now they have three more road games. So we're going to see 10 out of 15 games on the road. No, actually, the next four are on the road. So we're going to see 11 out of 16 games on the road. All 16 of those games are against teams that will almost certainly make the playoffs. And most of them are going to be top six seeds and avoid the play in altogether. So if we're sitting here in a week, a week, a week from tonight, the Wolves play at Boston on the second night of a back to back, a week from Wednesday night, I should say, recording this after the game on Wednesday. After 17 games, sorry, 15 games with 10 of them on the road, if the Wolves are above 500 in those games, like, I, I don't know, a couple games above 500. I guess right now they're seven and five with four more. So uh, say they split those four, which I think is reasonable, and they go nine and seven in this run. That's not bad. I mean, they're not the Golden State Warriors from a few years ago. They were never going to lose just nine games. I We joked about it on the basketball party a couple weeks ago on the, on the Wednesday show. Um, that wasn't going to happen. But if they finish this stretch nine and seven, they're very likely going to still be, you know, tied or ahead as the number one seed in the West. So like the sky is not falling and, and maybe I should have led with that sentiment. I, I don't know how many people actually would feel like it is uh, because no matter how you slice it, this team is still have been very, very good and is, and is going to ha finish with a good season. They just are. Um, now we're not even halfway. So we'll see how the wolves do. I think they'll win. Uh, you know, we talked with this again on the basketball party uh, on Wednesday. I think they'll beat Houston. I think they'll beat Dallas. Orlando's a bit, that's a tricky matchup for Minnesota. It's also the front end of a back-to-back -back in Boston. So it wouldn't shock me if they won the next two and then lost two after that. And then it's like, oh no, now they're alternating two wins and two losses. Who cares? These are tough teams. The NBA is tough. There's a back-to-back -back in there. There's a lot of travel. Like teams lose games. The fact that we went until January 3rd before this team lost two consecutive games is remarkable. It really is. All right. On Friday, I do want to peek ahead at some of these matchups. We will talk Wolves-Rockets because we somehow haven't seen Houston yet, like two and a half months into the season. So we'll talk about that matchup. We'll check in on the Rockets. We'll talk about uh, the upcoming schedule and uh, likely do a bit more lineup stuff as well on Friday's show. Uh, of course, we'll have the live postcast on Lockdown Sports Minnesota on YouTube Friday night as well. Uh, we'll tell you about that on Friday too. That's all we have for today here on the show. A big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. 
Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.